Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, here with Gidget. <laughs> um, and today we've got something a little, uh, well not really different, I've done tutorials before, but this is going to go kind of hand in hand with the sew along that um, we started on Tuesday. And my original thought was to do my sew along videos on Tuesdays this month and then the little tutorials um, on Fridays. But I'm afraid that's going to make just the month very, like, sew along heavy. And um, it's just a lot of, like, informative videos, which I love doing. And I know that you guys, um, or quite a few of you guys, enjoy seeing. But I also want to have some, like, light and fluffy stuff, too. Just for, like, entertainment value, you know? I don't want the channel to be all one thing. I mean, clearly, my focus is on teaching and, um, I don't know, just, just inspiration, that kind of thing, but um, I don't want it to become so one-sided that if you're not into the tutorials and sew-alongs that you're just not going to want to watch. So, <laughs> that being said, um, I think, I think, for at least like the first three weeks in March, you're going to have three videos a week. Do not get used to this. Um, the other reason behind that is that I have to film all of this kind of at once as I'm making this blazer. Uh, so I'm doing a whole lot of filming right now. Like I've got a week of like intense, and I say intense, intense like compared to my normal filming schedule of intense filming. And I'm going to have pretty much eight videos when all is said and done in that time frame. So then I'm left the rest of the month without having, which is nice, um, without having to film because we do have... Um, spring break is at the end of the month kind of thing to where I don't have to be filming on a like a super rigid schedule but I enjoy filming and um, I want to be able to continue doing that and I don't want to get so far ahead of myself either that um, I kind of lose touch by the time you know things go up and I'm like oh I don't even remember filming that hardly so anyway that's a lot of explaining to say that I think that um, I also wanted to break out these tutorials separate from the sew along so that when you want to go back and look at a certain um, would be more complicated uh, technique that you can just go to the tutorials on my playlist on my page to be able to access those pretty easily as opposed to having to like scroll or you know fast forward through a tutorial to find that part. Uh, so in the sewing sew alongs I'm going to actually refer back to tutorials. So the tutorial will go up before that technique is actually used in the sewing along if that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. So <laughs> So anyway, today is day one of these little mini tutorials that I am putting up, and so you should be seeing this on Wednesday. So yesterday we talked about fabric and that kind of thing for the sew along, and today I just want to talk about my industrial sewing machine. Since I've started the channel, and you can see her right there, uh, my Juki, I've had tons of questions about industrial sewing machines and um, how to thread it and how it works and that kind of thing and just a little bit more information on her. So today I'm going to do a little tour of my Juki sewing machine slash tutorial on how to use an industrial machine. Now again, I want to preface this with each model and each make of machine, whether it be industrial or home sewing machine, is different. So you're definitely going to want to like refer to your owner's manual if you are looking at purchasing an industrial machine or if you already have one. Um, I've also had a lot of people comment on, I think that industrial machines are maybe a little more prevalent on the market. You can get your hands on them, and they are more cost effective, which is odd. Um, most industrial sewing machines are super hard wearing and will literally last a lifetime <laughs> if taken care of properly. Um, but they are cheaper just because you don't have the computer component that you do in a lot of new home sewing machines. So they last longer and they're cheaper for those two reasons. Now, you're going to see that I do have an electronic panel on mine, which I will show you here in just a second. Um, I do have that electronic pan panel that is kind of a little mini computer, um, but that's a super easy part to replace if I ever needed to. So, um, or if I needed to kind of upgrade that. So, or at least I've been told. <laughs> I'm also not an expert in industrial sewing machines. This is the first one I've owned. Um, and I've worked on one, another one before, which is in a little older school. And I'll talk about that a little more. Um, but this is the first one that I've owned. So, and I have not really had like an in-depth class on it. It was kind of a crash course when he delivered it to my house and set it up for me. So, <laughs> um, this is all just stuff that I figured out as I've been sewing on it. I love it. And if you have room for one, and if you do a lot of sewing, I would highly recommend an industrial machine. Now, mine only does a straight stitch, so I do have to have my um, home machine, my just regular old home machine, which I owned 
Oh gosh, I think I had that for like six years before I actually purchased this one. Um, so this one still gets used. Like I do my buttonholes on it. I don't use a zigzag stitch a lot, but if I'm sewing swimsuits, lingerie, that kind of thing, you do need a zigzag stitch. And so I do use this machine um, for that. So I don't use it a ton, but it does, it does get used. Um, and for any finishing and stuff, I use my serger, which you guys have seen me use before in tutorials on that. Okay, so let's go over and I'm going to show you how to thread it and yeah, we're just going to kind of get the full tour and I kind of show you some of the features on mine and um, yeah, how I sew with it. Okay. Okay, so let's do a quick um, once over and you're totally going to be able to see like my lighting setup over here. <laughs> this is like true behind the scenes work here, folks. All right, this is my machine. It is a Juki uh, DDL 9000. Okay, so we're going to do a little tour of the machine. I actually have um, my thread that I'll be using for the sew along that I just tied off. Um, so you can see that I've knotted it. I just cut the thread that was on there and I've knotted my new thread on. Um, and I'm going to show you how that um, threads through. And I also need to do the same for the bobbin. So this is the thread. Okay, so I've got my, this is the thread that I'm sewing with. And then the thread that I can wind a bobbin, I can, sew, sorry. I can simultaneously wind a bobbin as I am sewing. So we'll talk about that more in a second, but that's what that second spool is for. Um, okay, I'm just going to go over the features a little bit, and then I'll show you how to thread it. So this is that little electrical panel that I was telling you about. The machine's currently not on, um, but that is the electrical panel. And then you've got all the bits and bobs. This piece that's hanging off right here is a light, and this is just, he attached that for me when I bought it from the industrial um, from the guy and it it's attached back there but it does like to move anyway ah. okay and then you have the basis of the machine here now my machine is newer and it has a servo motor which means I'm gonna turn it on now old school machines this part actually sits in oil mine doesn't um, the old engines engines motors <laughs> the old motors you had to actually sit the machine in a bed of oil which then requires you to um and i not that old like the one that i've used before this that's how it was um and it kind of sounds like an airplane taking off and landing when you turn it on and off and it's super loud when it's going um this one doesn't do that this one actually has a the oil well which is over here and I'm supposed to keep, if you can see, this little red line right here has to be between these two horizontal red lines. And I just add oil up here when it starts to get too low. Super easy. Um, but yeah, I have a servo mo motor on this and it's super quiet and I'm going to show you. So here is where I turn it on and off. So listen, that's it. <laughs> it doesn't make like it's so quiet and it uses a lot less power. So now you can see that my little electronical pa um, panel is on, and I'm going to be super honest with you guys. Um, I have really no idea. I don't really mess around with anything on this. <laughs> this button right here, I will press if I want to turn off my backstitch function. So when I sew, it automatically backstitches at the front and at the end for me. And when I press this button, it won't do that. So that is the only... <laughs> button that I use when he turned this on for me and I, I'm sure I could read that my manual is gigantic it's like no other um, manual that I've seen for a sewing machine um, but he messed around with a whole bunch of the settings on here especially for the top speed mine is not set to go the top speed I mean it's super fast um, when I go full throttle uh, but it's not set to go at the very top speed that it can go so there's a whole bunch that you can change on here I just don't mess with it so yeah and is that right? Yeah. That's my back stitch. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And this whole setup right here is how I, my bobbin gets wound. And I'll go over that in a minute. Okay. So over here, this, if you push this down and so it does a back stitch for you at any time. Um, so you could do that if you're not wanting to maybe, although I never use this function. I can backstitch by doing this bar, and I can also backstitch by doing this. I can hit this with my, um, well here, sorry. I'm trying to hold a camera and show this to you. So, if I'm sewing along, um, I can hit this with my finger and it will backstitch for me. This is super 
super efficient um, sewing. And this is how I adjust all of my tensions, like my thread tensions can be adjusted here. I can adjust a little bit here, and you can see where the thread goes through. We'll go through that again. And I can address, uh, adjust my presser foot um, pressure with this. I have not touched this. He kind of scared me, actually, when he was talking about making sure you mark where it is, because it can throw everything off. So I really haven't touched that. Um, and then over here, sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place, is um, you push that down and you can adjust your stitch length. So I can go up to a size five um, and I kind of hang out. You want to line it up with like that indentation there, but I kind of hang out at about a 2.5. And then here is my hand wheel. If I want to do any hand wheel, especially like over zippers and that kind of thing, there's the hand wheel. I mean, that's pretty basic to most sewing machines. Now my bobbin pulls out right here. And let's see, can you see in there? Do, 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 do. The bobbin's hiding around in there. Now, I can access the bobbin. This is some creative camera work. Ah, right there. So my hand sticks into that hole right there to get the bobbin out. And it uses, let's see, there's my hand. <laughs> it uses these bobbin cases. Come on, camera. Right there. And there was the thread that I had in there before. And you can get all of this, and that's the other thing. With industrial machines, you can get um, like the parts for like feet and um, bobbin cases and your bobbins for so much less than your home machines. I'm just saying. I have a whole drawer for all feet here. Then I think I paid like three to five dollars for each of them. Um, again, this doesn't do a zigzag or anything, but it's just, it's so economical. Okay, so that is the basis there. So I'm going to show you, um, well here, I'm going to set the camera up. I'm going to show you how I put a bobbin into the bobbin case, and then I really just, I'll see if I can show you how I stick it in there, and then I'll show you how to thread it, and then I'll show you how to sew with it. Okay. Okay, so here is my bobbin. And it's just wound, um, you know, I've just wound it on my machine. And again, I'll show you how I hook that up on my machine too. So what you want to do when you're winding or when you're putting this into the bobbin case is um, you want your thread. Okay, you've got this whole little, this little gap that's right here. And you want your thread to go in through that. Now you want it wrapping this way around <laughs> around the bobbin. Don't put it in this way where it's going that way, but you want it going towards you. So basically you just slip it on and then you're gonna slip that into that little groove there. Switch it so maybe you can see a little better. This is kind of hard to do. And then it just comes back and around so that it's coming kind of through that little hole right there. And then when I put it into the machine, I'm going to put it into the machine with this gap right here facing up. And I'm just going to pull this little handle out. And unfortunately, it's too dark for you to see um, me putting on. But there's just like a, a spool where the bobbin goes that you can see. So I'm just going to slide that onto the spool and then make and then let go of the little handle and make sure everything is on there. So I'm just going in there and we're good to go. All right, so that's how the bobbin goes in on this thing. Now, if you are wanting, well, let's do threading. I'll show you how to wind a, wind a bobbin here in a second. <laughs> okay, so my battery died. <laughs> It is a couple of hours later, but now we are going to thread the machine. <laughs> All right, so the pink thread, um, you're gonna watch the pink thread. So it comes, try and focus that. It comes up from the back, or sorry, from the front. Oh, from the front to the back. And then, focus, maybe, come on, 
Okay, can you see that? <laughs> it goes through the back of this and then it wraps around so that it goes through the back of the second little dot there. There we go. There we go. And now my phone is ringing. Hold on. <laughs> okay, so again, the thread comes through the back of this and then wraps around and comes through the back of the second hole. Okay, so I'm going to start pulling the thread as we do this so you can kind of follow along its journey. You also want to make sure you have the presser foot up so that it releases all the tension rings. So we're going to go through that piece. Maybe. All right. Then, focus. It's going to travel through the back of this little hole and it wraps into that disc and around and it comes out the bottom here and then goes down through that hole. Okay, my pink is caught up there. <laughs> and then it, we're going to wrap it around this tension disc and it kind of gets brought. There's a little, sorry, this is hard to do. There's a little end to this little guy right here. So it comes around this way through the tension disc and kind of goes around this little guy so you can see the thread kind of hangs out there in this little section here. Okay, let me get my pink caught up. All right, and then from there it goes under this and then it goes into this little carrier. Then <laughs> I never thread this from the beginning. I always pull through because this takes forever. Then it's going to go from right to left through that hole. And then it's going to come back down. And again, so you can see it goes up through this little guy and back down through that. Then it's going to be placed behind this so that it runs through that little hole. Then you go through from front to back this hole and then the needle gets threaded from the left to the right. So I'm going to show you industrial needles real quick. They don't look like home needles. Hold on. Okay, so a home sewing needle, I'm going to try really hard for you guys to be able to see this, has the flat side. Um, you know when you're putting it into your machine the flat side usually goes to the back um, and then it's round on the other sides a industrial needle does not have that. So an industrial needle, can you see that? <laughs> an industrial needle is flat or is round, sorry, all the way around. So when I put this into the machine, you have to look, oh, this is going to be really hard. Okay. Really carefully and you see maybe you can see where it dips in there at the side right down here when you get towards the point that's the the um, throat kind of of the needle there I'm sure it has a technical term but this little indentation you want it will depend on your machine but I want mine to face to the right so my machine gets threaded from the left to the right instead of front to back like a home machine okay so I'm going to put this new needle in. We're getting it all ready for our blazer and I'll come right back. Okay, so now you can see the needle is in and it's all threaded from left to right. Um, my presser foot is down and to change my needle, it's just this screw, sorry, right over here on the right. I just unscrew that and then I can slip the old needle out and put the new needle in. So now we are all ready to go. So I'm going to show you how to um, thread the uh, bobbin winder really quick in case you're, let me back it up a little here. <laughs> okay, so I have put thread um, on here and I've tied it onto the string. So it's the same thing 
Um, actually, this one I have going from the back to front. It must not matter. Well, this is the way he did it when he set it up. We're just going to go with it. Okay, so this one I just have the thread going from the back to the front. Sorry, it's kind of fuzzy. Then it travels down here. Focus. All right. And it goes from the back through the front on this guide. And then it comes and wraps around this tension guide. And it goes through that hole there. And then it's going to travel to an empty bobbin thread. And I'm going to um, thread that up through this hole here. And then I'm going to just pop it on here. And then I push that closed. And that will wind my bobbin as I'm sewing. So let me do that real quick and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, it's all on, ready to go. So now when I start sewing the first seam, I do like to hang on to the, the tail that's through here um, just to help it get started because sometimes this will pull out out of the bobbin and then you've been sewing forever and it hasn't been winding. <laughs> Um, just know that from experience. But anyway, now the bobbin is ready to go and it will wind as I am sewing. So there we go. So now I think I want to talk now. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the feet that go with this machine um, that I have and then I will show you how to actually sew. Okay, so here are some of the extra feet that I have to go with this machine. I've got a zipper foot that is here. There we go. There we go. Um, that allows you to sew really close to the edges of zippers. Uh, this is my favorite one. I also have these that will allow you to sew because you see the little um, indentation there where the needle goes is on the right hand side on this one. Can you see that? There we go. It's on the right hand side on this one and then on this one it's on the left hand side. But I find that the, since there's not evil, e evil, <laughs> even pressure on either side of the needle, um, I don't get as good of uh, tension with my thread with these two. So this one that where it has pressure on both sides is my favorite, and I can get really close with that one. That's pretty skinny. Then I've got my Teflon foot. I use this anytime I'm sewing with vinyl or leather, pleather, whatever. Um, that's an excellent one. This is a gathering foot. Again, these feet are so inexpensive compared to home machines. I think these were anywhere, I don't think anything was over $10. Um, so some of these I bought for specific projects or just to kind of play around with. Um, this is a gathering foot and so it will, um, it pushes the fabric down. So if you sew with a long basting stitch, it, especially with lighter weight fabrics, it will gather it for you. Um, it's just hard to determine how much it will gather into something else. And it doesn't sew it on to something flat like the serger ruffler foot does. This literally just does the gathering. Then you would have to attach it to the flat piece you were gathering it to. But anyway, it's kind of cool. This is my invisible zipper foot. I use this one a ton. It's got the little grooves on the bottom for the invisible zipper. I love this one. Uh, Cause invisible zippers are kind of my go-to. Then I've got a couple of piping feet, which these have like the grooves on the bottom. These work amazing. I used um, this one when I was making some cushions, I guess, um, for our outside area. I hate home deck sewing, but I did do it. That allows you to sew your, core, your bias tape around piping and then also to sew the piping onto like the pillows or whatever, and it is amazing. This made that process so easy. I have a quarter inch one and then I have an eighth inch one and the eighth inch one is the one I used for my Carolyn pajama top when I made all the silk piping for that top and this also worked phenomenally. It was, it made sewing that piping in like so easy. And then I have two rolled hem feet. I've not mastered these yet. I have them and I haven't mastered them. And they're two different sizes. This one's a one eighth that sews a one eighth inch hem and this one is a quarter inch hem and it's supposed to roll it all together. I think it's just a learning curve on there and I just haven't had the chance to figure it out. But again, the feet are so inexpensive compared to um, home machines. Okay, so I'm gonna get a piece of scrap fabric and kind of show you how you sew on this. And then um, 
I'll come back to say goodbye, but then we're going to start sewing on our blazer. Okay, I'm showing you my very dirty floor here. <laughs> this is the main part of the machine. This is the pedal. So clearly, when your foot is on the pedal, and I am wearing slippers, yes, when you go all the way forward and press the top, just like if you're regular sewing, um, that makes the machine run. You can adjust the speed by how hard you press, just like kind of like driving a car. So by how hard you press, oops. And sometimes when you're talking, okay. <laughs> sometimes when you're talking, you accidentally press it. So by how hard you press in the front um, determines how fast it will sew for you. If I press back just a little bit, can you hear? Just a little bit. It raises and lowers my presser foot, which is an amazing. Um, if I press back, and I'll show you in a second, really hard on the back pedal, it back stitches for me and cuts my threads, which is amazing. So I will show you how this works. I've just got a little scrap here. So again, I just press back a little bit on that back pedal or on that foot pedal and it, okay. All right, so press her foot's up. I hit that, just press backwards on the pedal a tad and it will lower it for me. And then I start and it backstitched for me at the beginning. Sorry, this thread's not normally so long, only when you first change the thread. So we can go slow. So this is slow. Okay, we can stop and I can press back a little bit. So I can do more precise sewing, get that tail out of the way, or I can go fast. And this is all done by the foot pedal. And then when I'm finished, I press back hard and it does that. It back stitches for me and then cuts it. So there we go. So then when you're ready to sew again, you have a much smaller tail. <laughs> and I'm not even going full blast um, just because I'm not working with a long piece of fabric here, but. <laughs> There's a crooked line for you. So there you go. That is how the industrial machine works. I feel like I was giving a commercial. Although, again, I highly recommend this Juki. It is really, that's a handmade pincushion for my son <laughs> um, that's sitting there. But yeah, it is pretty phenomenal. I mean, you have to have space for it, obviously, but um, it's pretty great. So there she is. Let me know if you have any questions. That's all of my bobbins over there that I have already wound. That's the other thing. These bobbins are huge. They hold thread forever. Um, and you can see we did some sewing and eep, we've already wound some of that bobbin with the gray thread. So there we go. Okay, so that is it for the, the tutorial on my sewing machine. So a lot of people have been asking about how that works and how I thread it and all that kind of stuff. So I hope that wasn't too boring for some of you. Um, but yeah, that is my machine. That's how it works. That's the one I'll be using for my sew along for the rest of the uh, blazer. So anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy these kind of tutorials because it does help me plan for the future. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because again, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up here in March. Um, it'll slow down a little bit after that. I'll probably go back um, to just two videos a week because that's just not sustainable for me to do three. <laughs> but again, the sew along is causing it just to be able to do a whole bunch of filming all at once. So anyway, um, thumbs up if you liked it, hit the subscribe button, and I think that's it. And I'm not sure what video I'm going to bring for you on Friday. It'll be something kind of light and fluffy. Um, I ordered, Smuggler's Daughter had a little bit of a fabric sale in February, and I spent a little bit of birthday money on some stuff for spring. So, um, it may be a fabric haul, um, video with some plans. Um, I'm currently organizing my pattern stash. I actually put something on Instagram that caused a little bit of, um, a lot of people had strong opinions on whether or not they wanted to see my pattern stash. It was either a resounding yes, I really want to see it, and other people saying no, that that wasn't something that they were interested in, that they liked my channel for other reasons. So anyway, um, I probably will at least show you once everything is, um, 
organized. I have a, actually a gigantic mess that you can't see on the floor right now. <laughs> but once it is all organized, I may just do a short little video showing you how I have organized them um, briefly in case that's something that you guys are interested in. Because um, actually as I'm looking at it, going through my entire pattern stash, even if I broke it up into videos that I sprinkled throughout the rest of the year, would maybe be like hour long videos or something just to do like I clearly have a problem <laughs> when it comes to fabric buying especially the big four patterns I have more restraint with the independent patterns just because I really have to want to make it in order to spend the money but when they have these pattern sales um I just go hog wild so anyway I clearly have a little bit of a problem but that aside um that may be what I bring you on Friday. Something along those lines. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to try and keep my Friday videos just a little more light and fluffy. Kind of show you what I've been working on. Um, stuff like that. So that is it for today. And I will see you on Friday. Bye. And then again on Tuesday for the second part. We're actually going to start sewing. Um, we're going to cut out and start sewing our blazer on Tuesday. So be ready for that. I'll see you then. Bye.